this is not a, a super sell problem, but there's also business reasons why you're going to want to sometimes spike revenue during certain times of year, especially when you're like considering UA budgets and that type of thing, right? Like you might be okay with a hangover effect in February or whatever, you know, like, or, yeah. or vice versa, maybe not. Um, so outside of those like core monetization and economy changes, there's been some really strong social features. So they have new 5v5 gamers. This mode. is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too Gotta seriously. Jump in on the intro, Mate, but do you want yeah. to or do you want me to? <laughs> I think, you know, what can we do? Like, uh, we can jump straight in. My okay. name is Matej Lančarić. We have Jakub, uh, we have Jake, and we have Ken. And this is another crossover episode because you love it, we love it, and it's always fun. Yeah. Before we start, Ken, can you give us a little intro from your end because you are the mysterious guy in here. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm ken landon i'm a director of product at hit factor which is a, a web3 gaming company um and previously i've worked at congregate at scopely at activision blizzard working on mobile games pc games um, console games and i'm a, a big brawl stars fan as you guys can see the video i have a Mate, I don't think we really established what we're talking about. So maybe I, I can just jump in or yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, go on. Guys, so as a lot of you guys know, we did a crossover, Monopoly Go on Monopoly Go profitability. Controversial. <laughs> so given how successful that was, we wanted to cover a topic that is not so controversial, which is Brawl Stars is going freaking nuclear, right? Or it yeah. did. Now we expect that from like, you know, Christmas kind of push, things like that. But we have not seen the kind of numbers that we have recently seen in Brawl Stars since 2020, 2021. And like 2022, 2023, Brawl Stars kind of started going down. We'll talk about that. But what we want to talk about today, the whole focus of this discussion is like, you know, WTF is going on with Brawl Stars. There's a lot of stuff that is going on at Supercell. They talked about structurally changing live ops. And it's very surprising for a game that's this long lived to have the kind of huge boost that we've seen in, in, in a game that like, like Brawl Stars. So that's why we have brought on two of the two and a half gamers. Yes. I'm going to assume Felix is... Only yeah, with he, one he's half. the half gamer, so yeah, we switched <laughs> his uh, <laughs> non-gaming <laughs> appetite for you guys because you know what you're talking about. Right. And, and also Brawl Stars Zero ads, so, you know, he will be just sitting here uh, and then smiling. Uh, right. For now, for now. So now oh, <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, interesting. And we brought Ken on because he knows, you know, like he's, he's pr bringing the product management expertise, having worked at the companies that he talked about. Uh, I'm here more for, you know, laughs and I haven't played <laughs> Brawl Stars that much, but also just to like keep, keep things a little bit lively and entertaining and just to set the structure. So, you know what to expect. We're going to basically talk about the performance of the game. I'll cover some information from data.ai that talks about the revenue, things like that. We'll go into a product kind of, you know, I don't want to call it a deep dive or a master class, but you know, we'll go deep on the, on the product. <laughs> Well, well, class and Brawl Stars, yeah. Because we've got, you know, two of the two and a half gamers here, we'll talk about the marketing and UA and then yeah. generally talk about the long-term outlook and conclusions. Um, and we can share screen today, right? Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, of course. Right. That's, that's, yeah, you, you have, have to. to. Yeah, you have right. to, yeah. So this, before... is visual, this is a visual show, visual podcast. We need to By the them. way, whoever thinks that I have Brawl Stars currently running on an emulator, so whoever needs like direct Brawl Stars kind of game in between his speaking, just tell me. I will share it anyway later down the line. Okay. Yeah, yeah you, should, you should play. We need to see how you suck at Brawl Stars <laughs> as well. <laughs> how many trophies do you have, Jacob, on your emulator? Well, what? How, How many, many trophies, trophies do you Seven. have? Seven. Uh, shit, once. Like... Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, this is not your main account, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, of course, of course. All right. So I, I think we could dive into performance, but before there we do, is there anything else we want to tee up for the conversation today for our audience? No, I would I would tease. Like, uh, usually when we talk about the, like game growth, it's product updates and UA. 
in this specific case, you know, as you know, Supercell, it's not going to be that much about the UA rather than product side of, of the equation. But are are they ramping up UA or do you think they're this, running, this yeah, recent... they're running some, some new things? Uh, I'm going to okay. talk about that, but they like, since they started making changes, um, it wasn't like that impactful for, well, for it, the growth. It, so, sorry to budget, but isn't this whole thing pretty much completely powered by influencers? I keep like watching, you know, supercells literally like main influencers they have the dev builds literally the dev builds of the game to show off all that stuff and each of those videos has like 300k half a million views with every single update and everything mm. so my guess is that their ua yeah. per ua is like completely yeah, like, driven by this community this is, yeah yeah like you, you know you remember uh, what we what we always discussed when uh there was a new game in soft launch or closed beta all the same uh supercell influencers were talking about it and bringing like everything up almost zero like traditional let's call it traditional ua yeah that's so, that's, that, that's new age we live in influencers are the new marketing right so yeah, for super like, you know how it is but like, the thing is like the point i want to make here is that these guys aren't just like you know let's make a video about this game these yeah. guys have access to dev builds like mm. to literal dev builds of the game to show off like for instance i was looking at all the hypercharge abilities because the guy was just showing them on the screen we just target dummies and you don't and, get this uh, thing as a normal person. Man, yeah, yeah, cool. But you know, I I also had the dev build for for our recording, so you know, it's really yeah, of course. <laughs> so, All right. uh, no, I'm I'm kidding. Of course, I'm kidding. Of course, he's kidding. <laughs> of course I'm kidding. <laughs> I had test flight. I mean, it's it's almost like a dev build. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to share my screen so people yeah. know what we're talking about. Uh, do you mm -hmm. guys see? Okay, here we go. At so first. Sponsored by data.ai. No, so we got some data from data.ai. <laughs> and basically, can you guys see my screen? I can't see yeah, it. Not, not yet. You, know, not you yet. need to click on the on, on the share button and then on the on the actual I tab. did. I think, okay. Mm, it is not working. Like right share, there at the bottom, screen, there's like the leave button. Window. Share. Yeah, share. Yeah, pick a window or screen. Yeah, then or tab in the, in the browser. No, there, there seems to be an error. Uh, here, let no, me you need send, to click, yeah. Let me send this to you. No, I have, uh, well, I have sensor tower, so I can, I can actually do that. Sponsored <laughs> by sensor tower. Sensor tower now. <laughs> I just put, I just put the slides in the, um, or the screenshots in, uh, in Slack, if you want to. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm getting errors on my side. Oh, well, I've, uh. Yes. Okay. One sec. You need to click share, then share, and no, no, then... I, I did that. I actually did that. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. You see this, All right. right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So uh, basically, when we look at the data, we can see that uh, there was a big change. So in like 2020 and 2021, we can see. I think. I think this is a revenue graph. But could you also share the downloads yes, graph? Yep. So I, I think downloads were between somewhere like one and one and a half million on a weekly basis. But then yep. in 22 and 23, downloads dropped by half or so. And if you can go back to the revenue slide, um, similarly, we see like a much lower baseline with weekly revenue roughly around like six to eight million in 20 and 21. And then dropping to about two to four million in 22 and 23. But you can mm -hmm. see like the game has not had like a $12 million net revenue week since May of 2021. And we've seen yeah. this big spike. And so I, I think, as I mentioned earlier, you, we would typically expect a big holiday spike from, you know, kind of Christmas, New Year's, that kind of thing. And we've seen that over the past couple of years, but not to this level. And so like, I've got three big questions for this group, which we can kind of come back to as we close this discussion. Mm -hmm. But the first is yeah. like this recent spike, what do they do? Like, how is this spiking compared to the past few years? Second, there's been a lot of talk by Ilka, Supercell CEO, about how they are going to be changing how they do live ops. And so this approach to live ops, is this reflect, is, is this like change because of the the bigger changes that we've made is this going to be a structural change and then third can we expect a higher baseline now we're starting to see the drop as we would expect from a from a holiday push yeah but oh, wait, can wait we... a second look mm -hmm. i have i have all three games because okay. i was also looking into it because they said december was amazing like for all the games yeah. if we compare november clash of clans 30 million clash royale 19 and brawl stars 12. December, like Clash of Clans 57, Brawl Stars 20, which already surpassed Clash Royale with 19. 
And if you look at January, which is okay. um, so you're well, looking still, on a monthly basis, right? Yeah, this is monthly. Yeah, yep. this is monthly. Mm-hmm. So Clash of Clans is thirty seven, and then Brawl Stars twenty nine. So up by nine million, and I think like we are gonna see maybe one or two more millions uh, coming in when the, uh, the the data for January is gonna be closed. Okay, and it's like by what like forty percent more than the Clash Royale for January. It's like wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, That's this, this nice. game's for real, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's happening. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that that's like the data. Um, I thought we could probably, probably shift into the game itself and things like that, but is there any other comments or thoughts about the data from you, Mate, or Jacob, or Ken? Um, if you can return back to that uh, penny graph, um, the ones is more granular that JK well, shared. I can just, I can just do or you can by, just put it there. Yeah. Like, just what I day. wanted to mention for people not really following this, and I guess can 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 kind of support me on this one, is that I think Brawl Stars is like the most kind of game that went the most dra- drastic design changes throughout its life cycle. It was nearly mm-hmm. killed in soft launch. They literally changed the game from portrait mode to landscape, like last whatever patch. Yep. They completely changed the gacha system because before they would have this kind of a, let's say, very shallow gacha system where you would get like solid tokens where you would just get the brawler and there's nothing to it. You just have it and every duplicate of that every duplicate of that brawler just give you soft currency, which didn't work out, of course. Everybody was saying that. <laughs> and then the other very important change which happened in 2022 uh, was they removed uh, random Old, loot boxes loot from boxes. the game, which yeah. also pretty much kind of doubled down on the decline of the game, which I think, I think, I think Javier had an excellent article yeah, on this where he literally said that like it like destroyed like 14% of the baseline and just yeah, like he, he accelerated first, the... I think he first he said like it, it bumped up the revenue, but then, <laughs> then yeah. it declined quite heavily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Franks and... actually are planning a talk at the upcoming GDC about that and how it was really bad for their business. So it'll be interesting Ooh, to hear that. Okay. Right. And Jacob, to your point, I, I think that that's one of the stories that's pretty famous in terms of how Brawl Stars nearly got killed. And it, it was true from what I've heard that a lot of the executives and management team did not believe in the game. And, and the, t- the only folks that believed in the game was the actual development team, but they believed in it so strongly that they were given the the license, the authority to kind of keep going. And it's a good thing that they did. Um, but yeah, it's uh, um, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, a, a good lesson learned for other people in, in the industry to learn about. It's like, how do you make these product decisions Maybe I talk for another pod- podcast, but how do you yep. actually do product validation and how do you make that kind of go, no go decision? But uh, yep. anyway, another another bit of information about why the revenue dropped off so much in 2022 is that they pulled out of Russia and Russia was accounting for a very large portion of their mm. install base and revenue base. So, oh, interesting. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's a pretty meaningful part of their business. And now they no longer have access to that portion of their business. Got it. All right. So maybe we could shift to product and we'll talk about Brawl Stars as a game. And I yeah. thought that I could, before handing it off to Ken, because Ken's like the more seasoned guy and he's got like a lot of experience with Brawl Stars, but I thought it might be interesting to even get, you know, a, a, a guy like myself, who's more like product strategy oriented. And I just started playing Brawl Stars. I haven't played that much, but I can kind of give you that kind of new perspective playing hmm. for the first time. Um, and I mean, I, I played it years ago for like a few minutes, but then that's about it. And I think the first thing that I noticed when I was playing Brawl Stars is that the game does have like that trademark supercell simplification. I mean, the, the main screen is, I would say, relative to like the Clash games, more yeah, dense. I think you can you can share the screen and yep. just... Uh... Yeah, feel free to give it to me. Yeah, but yeah. I think we still find a relatively tight core loop for what they are trying to do with like eight different game modes. So it's go. about as <clears throat> tight and simple as I think you can get relatively for all the features that they have packed in. And from my perspective, I would say that the gameplay itself is, for, you know, in my opinion, relatively simple with a heavy orientation towards micro with almost zero macro gameplay. So it's... From my perspective, it's all about abilities, ults, differentiated brawlers. And you do have some, you know, the kind of like the basic micro concepts around ability, CC, kiting, all that basic hmm. micro stuff. So it's, again, relatively simple. Um, but in, in my opinion, the complexity comes 
not in so much in the micro itself, but you know, there, and again, there's no macro, but r- rather in the gameplay modes. And I think that's where they make the game a little bit more interesting by having all those different modes, different ways of playing. Um, the maps are basically flat with obstacles. You don't have like um, macro types of um, of maps with like lanes, minions, towers. There's mm. no, as far as I could see, early, mid, late game objectives, no damage types. And so there is, I believe there was some no, some notion of like a range versus melee and different kinds of range abilities. And you do have some micro notions of like gap close for melee characters and things like that. But otherwise, not super complex micro. And again, almost no macro as far as I can tell. So for me, again, this is like the new player perspective where the game shines, in my opinion, is just letting players play with variety in the modes and easily with friends in the way they want to play. So solo, duos, threes, fives, just having a bunch of different modes to keep things interesting and fresh. And I've really been you know, a, a huge Ooh, b- believer go. in the thesis behind enabling co-op game experiences. And I, and I think like, especially through COVID, that's been like hmm. a kind of gameplay experience that a lot of gamers, especially younger gamers are used to and looking for. But from my perspective, you know, that's really where the, the magic of Brawl Stars comes in. Also games are really fast, especially when you start, it's basically instant matches which I believe is clearly because of bots and then matches can drag a bit as you get to higher ranks. I suspect they're using some kind of hybrid in terms of bots as you get um, higher up in the ranks. I don't know. I haven't played enough. But I would say compared to a MOBA, like a a League or Wild Rift, um, you know, the game is like, you know, a three out of 10 in terms of complexity if a MOBA (laughs) like Wild Rift is a 10. But that may be appropriate for mobile, right? And I think there's probably a bigger discussion we could have on another podcast about m- micro versus macro and why is like RTS not popular anymore uh, relative to like MOBAs and, and for mobile, you know, is a game like this more appropriate for, you know, again, less macro, more micro, that kind of thing. But I would say that it seems like, like you know, they've really kind of nailed it in terms of the balance that they've struck and um, kind of what they've done with the game. So. Anyway, um, that, JK, that's my new player perspective. And uh, go go ahead, Jacob. No, just like one thing because I can guarantee that Matty doesn't know what macro micro I was just, micro I was is. Just, so if you can explain like, no. that, okay. no, it's like I'm like okay. So let's see, like when when should I ask? What the fuck, JK is talking about? What's like what's micro versus? Okay. Yeah, it's like, co- he... common MOBA terms, but yeah, please, JK, do. <laughs> okay, okay, so so okay. Like, okay. So well, my, maybe we'll my, get there. micro is like your actual gameplay, controlling the character, moving around, shooting, all of the, yeah. like controlling the character. Macro would be more like things like in, in, in a MOBA, it'd be like your itemization strategy. It would be mm. your lane strategy. Like when do I shift from this lane to another? Do I okay. gank or not? And so it's like um, when you're collecting money and you're thinking about which towers to take down, it really comes from the old RTS days where, you know, the the macro side was like, you're building the base, you're trying to decide what units to build. The micro is when you're actually like fighting other okay. enemies and stuff. And How so- How good you can click. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so an important concept behind the balance between micro and macro is really about, um, you know, kind of like, um, you know, the, the amount of complexity that you're introducing into the game, right? Because if you have to keep, so there's a theory that, in RTS games today, that the current audience, it's just a little bit too much for them to keep all the macro and the micro. Like you gotta be juggling a shit ton of stuff in your head. In your head, yeah. Right, like your managing all this and like, oh yeah, well. I wanna yeah. make more units here and this and that. And then these guys are coming here and like managing all that may be like too much, um, That's, too much yeah, complexity. Too complicated, yeah, okay. So, and especially <laughs> for mobile, I think simpler, having a heavier progression orientation. So that's another thing that I, I see in um, Brawl Stars is that they do have state, more stateful progression, which is a little bit different from a MOBA. MOBA. But um, but I would say appropriate for mobile, right? Um, but anyway, those okay. are like, good. again, okay, good. my nice. new player perspective. And by the way, I was I was surprised. I, I mean, I, I, I was surprised at how fun and good of a game that they executed Brawl Stars. So 
I think that's pretty cool of them to make a game that's that's so you know so good. And I think they d- did a great job, and it's good to see them kind of pushing it more. But let me now hand over to Ken, who actually yeah. knows, knows this game well. Knows what's up. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you say that there's not very much macro because I feel like there's definitely not at the early parts of the game, but there is like the more you progress you play, through, then, then you yeah. can okay. cover more. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I think both both myself and maybe the developers see the game more as a, a FPS than they do a MOBA. Uh, right. Just because the there is a lot of micro and there is a lot of uh, moment to moment gameplay that is very action oriented and like uh, hmm. more twitchy and shooty versus what you're thinking of as like pre planning yeah. um, and reaction. And, and Ken, to your point, I think that would be a smart choice, right? If you have a bunch of game modes, then to like introduce what's called progressive complexity, right? Like yeah. as you develop more in the game, then you might have some game modes that introduce a little bit more macro. Look, I play for half a day. So again, I'm, I'm just giving that new player, <laughs> yeah. I'm giving that new player perspective, not the, by no means am I an expert in Brawl Stars at all, right? I, I just yeah. know product and strategy, that's it. So yeah. yeah, JK, you need to play more than half a day, <laughs> usually. usually. Yeah, we'll play like for a week uh, when we try to review a game. Well, I play yeah. for a week, Yaku well, plays for I, a week. I knew and, you guys were going to be feeling, on, so I was like, I, I, th- yeah, <laughs> I was just lean on those guys. <laughs> you, you, pulled, you pulled out Felix, like he, he does this <laughs> usually. <laughs> I think yeah. on my on my whaling account I have like ten thousand trophies. That's probably like a few months nice. of gameplay. And my free to play account I have you know six months to a year of play and twenty thousand plus trophies. There's so it's a, a lot more uh, yeah. long term experience. So why do you have whale account and free to play account? It's because of different exper- different yeah, uh, I want the, player experience. As a, indeed, as a product manager, I'm trying to you know deconstruct the game. I want to understand the nuances yeah, between different you, personas. Do you listen to this? Because yeah, this yeah, motherfucker yeah, is never say, never paying anything. He's like, oh well, I I I, I want to have just free to play experience. Like, like, where is that? Like the other other part of the equation. You need to oh, also like, have the yeah. The pay- Ken's right here. Like Ken's right. I should be spending more in games to have like a different yes. account experience. Thank just you. Make Mate pay for it. You know, just <laughs> get the expense expense account. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fair enough. I just want to say like we need to have you on the podcast more, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so far as um, like a deep dive into the actual changes that could have uh, contributed to this huge uplift in uh, revenue, you know, during the November December timeframe, um, hmm. the big things that kind of stand out to me um, just off the bat, both as a PM and as a player, are you know they've added new monetization verticals, they've really gone after their economy management, and they've made massive changes to some of their current monetization mechanics to kind of shore up their economy. They have new IAP tech in the store, so like new types of uh, offers um, that they didn't have before, which also includes access to random chances. So they can, you know, they've sort of brought back the gotcha without it being a gotcha. Um, yeah. Super heavy winter sales. I don't have great screenshots of this to, to share with you guys, but um, they were heavily discounting some of their legendary brawlers and uh, mm. mythic brawlers during December. And then also on more on the live ops side, they have super focused um, social events, uh, which we can share some screenshots of in, uh, later on. But going back to like new monetization verticals and economy management, well, the, the biggest thing by far that will be apparent to players and apparent to PMs is this change to the Brawl Pass, which Jacob's showing off right now. Yeah. Um, the, the first thing that jumps out at you is on this screen, you can see that Ooh. the purchase button for both of these offers is now in, um, you know, fiat currency only. There's no gem currency purchase option. Um, so players who were free to play previously who had stocked up gems were, you know, able to buy these passes um, mm. and now they can't. Mm. Yeah, so that's a that's a huge deal. So this is the primary IP for the game. You know, like the the highest amount of conversions are likely on this um, IP, and um, you know, yeah, you huge can, changes. We can actually we can actually check that. Yeah, go on. I will check it in the in, uh, on the backend. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, you know, additionally, they've made changes to the structure of this brawl pass. Um, they've pulled out the main brawler from the brawl pass, so you can no longer earn the main brawler from the brawl pass. Um, Jakob, you know, and I were talking before the podcast, and he mentioned that you can still earn brawlers in the brawl pass through this um, Star Road uh, currency that they grant you. Um, if you have all of your Star Road complete, you know, uh, that will 
different story, but um, you're already not caring about the brawler in there. They've also um, more heavily uh, dropped in skins inside. So you can see that this Brawl Pass has two very heavily detailed skins with lots of different, you know, uh, animations and PFX that are like thrown in on top of it. You have custom models, custom effects, custom textures, etc. The previous one, I think, had three, maybe maybe more skins uh, attached to it. So there's a, just a lot of uh, new cosmetic content inside of here. So, um, oh, quick, quick break yeah. uh, and uh, and a question for all of you: Like, what do you think is the most uh, purchased item in the game? And uh, these are it's not the uh, the battle pass. You're checking yeah. the, the analytics there. Yeah, My, I don't I, actually, I'm checking there. I, yeah. I mean, for this kind of game, and again, I don't play. I, I've only played for half a day, but for this kind of game that's champ oriented or brawler oriented, I would assume it's a direct purchase of brawlers. Yeah, it's actually like 170 uh, gems. It's, it's a gem, it's a gem purchase. Oh, yeah. you're gem, talking about yeah. the skew. Yeah. 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 Rather yeah, than the what, skew, what they spend yeah, yeah, on. The skew. Yeah, yeah, the skew. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ken, maybe it's, I could ask you a question. Yeah. Like, um, Usually for these kinds of games, they'll release a new brawler or champ or whatever that's broken, yep. and then they'll nerf it later. Is that the strategy here, too? Is that how they monetize this game? My my game design friends on the team would not be happy with me saying this, but that's absolutely. <laughs> oh come on! What, what <laughs> it's, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely what happens. Of um, yeah, the question they around did always all the time. That question around what uh, what skew is selling the most is like yeah. a, a trap at the company because mm. um, the answer to most PMs is oh it's the the brawl pass, but it's because the brawl pass used to be a gem skew and now it's IP yep. skew. So I wonder if that's changing now that the, it's yeah, IP I think skew. so. Yeah, I think so. This is just like all time or like some last whatever. The, yeah. Yeah. By, yeah. By the way, can we talk about um, like this kind of a notion here? Because I think it's kind of missing the point here. Because if I remember correctly, uh, the Fortnite documents that were uh, revealed during the lawsuit said that Fortnite is making only 16% of revenue from the pass and actually 70% from the store. And if I remember reading out like stuff around like battle passes and you know stuff around these things is that they are there should not be your main monetization kind of a it's more like you know, an engagement. Yeah, yeah more of an like engagement cool. because in the end as you see even here, like they are the biggest discount in your economy. And we yeah. like all know how it went well for Clash Royale when they introduce uh, you know like a season pass mechanic into it. Yeah. So do we think that currently regarding the overall revenue, especially those big spikes that we've seen lately, this is mostly coming from role passes, like percentage of overall revenue? Um I think there's there's just so many different revenue verticals that's hard to point to one as being the like the the cream of the crop, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've also, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but they've also increased the progression depth quite a bit on each of the brawlers or on, on a bunch of the brawlers through hypercharges, which is a huge coin sink. Um, and they're releasing those at a similar monthly cadence. So uh, in the data, it'll be very difficult for us to pick out whether or not it's hypercharges that are, that are pushing on revenue, if it's these passes that are pushing on revenue, or if it's yeah. specific um, IP offers. Jacob, I would probably think that you're right. That like if they just introduce the hypercharge, and my understanding of hypercharge is like a double is like a New double power progression layer. If I get yeah, it. yeah, just, then I, I, would a... I would assume it's it's brawler direct purchase in trying to get mm. that that hypercharge is would be yeah. my guess. It's driving most of the revenue. Yeah, Again, it's, it's, as, quite, it's as, quite a bit. <laughs> just from a strategic <laughs> perspective, I, I would yeah. guess not from playing. <laughs> Back on the on the Brawl Pass, they've done a few other interesting things from an economic standpoint. Um, if you open up the Brawl Pass and scroll all the way to the end, uh, they've changed the final unlock. So you now get uh, random star drops instead of uh, set currency. So previously, when you mm. went past the maximum tier, I think it was like 50 coins, 50 uh, like upgrade points, and 10 of the Star Road currency for every single additional level. So mm. you could inflate your economy significantly just by pushing on that um, that brawl pass. Now, because they have star drops there, which we don't know the full drop rates because it's not a purchased item, they can mm. significantly control their economy that way by throwing in cosmetics there. They can do all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, but basically they're reducing the total amount of currency through that if players push past fifty. Now I've heard anecdotally from like their Twitter accounts and stuff that they've talked about publicly. 
that there's actually more free currency for free to play players here, which is one of the ways they kind of managed the the social aspect of changing this from a gem store uh, or a mm. gem purchase option to a, a cash purchase option. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of like a, a different story because it's in the past versus after the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I watched a few videos and the guy was literally telling like there's thirty percent more stuff regarding for free to play players in ooh. the past. Now there's yeah. even gems which were not there, or let's say the gems you were used to kind of consume into the next pass. So now you actually have like hard currency out of it. Yeah, and yeah, and that like overall some kind of you know. 10 to 15 percent increases regarding the currency on free to play yeah, side i, I, I remember that. there was a elite at supercell who did a talk i forgot who it was but i think they were talking about clash of clans and they mentioned that they wanted to intentionally move to a monetization strategy that's um lower our poo poo higher conversion and, i mean i know i know had that talk about oh yeah i think putting... so yeah i think i think that was yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's right and so I, I do think like um, that, so, so what you guys are saying makes sense to me. Like if you can um, help support more, you know, free players, but also entice them somehow to at least convert a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's, very, that's... very good talk, by the way. Very oh, yeah, like, exactly. Like, yeah. Main thing about like how they move the player base from lower town halls into higher town halls by like kind of rearranging the economy and putting a battle pass system on top of it. Yeah, it, it's on YouTube. Like, search it out. Yep. You can put it in the show notes. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Easier. Yeah, but we've, we've already sort of hinted on, on hypercharges, but you know, there are an additional progression tier um, that is unlocked at the Brawler's maximum level. So you have to go from level 10 to level 11 now. And it unlocks for an insane amount of coins. It's five thousand coins per mm. hypercharge. I think is like, I think it's like twenty or thirty dollars if you want to buy it outright. Um, they often discount that in sales inside of the store, so you can sometimes pick them up for like eight or nine dollars. But um, it's a significant amount of uh, new monetization for the game. There's seventy six brawlers at the moment, and they're Ooh. releasing these in batches. So like, I think a three or four at a time, once a month or once every two months. So they have some legs there. If they continue to release these once every few months for the next couple of years, they'll be fine. Uh, just continuing to push on, on monetization for those crawlers. Um, the next big thing was new IP mer uh, purchase mechanics. So if you click on, yeah, well, Larry and Larry are a pretty good example here, but um, you can see here that there's a tier purchase. You you make a first initial purchase, and then you get a bunch of free unlocks throughout yeah. the time period afterwards. Nice. Um, I don't know if you want to share, Mate, the ones that we have in our, our paper doc. They show a little bit different because uh, some of the tiers yep. later on are gem purchases, which is slight a slight variation from this Larry and Laurie um, purchase. And they also include um, star drops inside. Yeah, it's it's like a variation of what's been kind of trending lately. I think Monopoly Go was one of the first one to use it, where you have like two free kind of steps, then I purchased one, then this more one, free steps. This so one you mean? <clears throat> yeah, those those two, both of those kind of work um, yeah. in conjunction. Like, uh, <clears throat> so really, what what you're seeing here is that there's a gem initial purchase that unlocks a few free purchases, and what's really important here is we're we're basically giving you free gacha poles, especially a legendary gacha, gacha poles. Um, gacha poles. And, you know, th this is them reintroducing luck mechanics back into the game. I'd like to see them do this more, you know, like bring hmm. back bring back more paid gacha, but like if the community didn't like it pre previously, maybe do something like it's only cosmetics. I think that would probably be supported, which also makes sense with, you know, them staffing up their live ops team a bit more. Hmm. Yeah, but like uh, the the mechanic is really clever because like you think you're getting something free, but it's kind of counted in the price of the yeah. you know, paid, paid Absol stuff. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but the amount of currency you're getting here. So this these two images, what that's uh, seven thousand coins plus a brawler skin plus seven thousand two hundred coins plus three pulls on a gacha, that is super heavily discounted. Like like mm. like a ten x or plus uh, discount. So it's a really 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 good offer for for players. Uh, I worry a little bit about cannibalization, but Seems to be working for them. Why? Or no. why, why do work worry about cannibalization? Because Typically of the hangover when, effect. Yeah, because well, the hangover effects. Typically, when you discount okay. things at eighteen, twenty x the value, you yeah. see pretty significant hangover effects the month afterwards. But I think they're combating this with the sheer amount of content. Like they are, they're just pumping out so much new content that the hangovers are sort of like being avoided because people just oh. move on to the next new thing. 
right? And they're just discounting the next new thing at the same rate. And it's almost like the the original rate okay, is but uh, isn't that like way to hell? <laughs> sort of, sort of. I yeah. think sort that, of. I think it's like the original price is um, what's the right term? You guys got to help me out here. Um, it's like an anchoring price, right? Like it's, oh, it's, yeah, a, yeah. Fa it's, it's mm. a fake anchor, right? Uh, nobody mm. really ever buys at the real price that's in the store because they're always only buying through these discounts. So it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, that's purely yeah, that's what, basic what game design economy. Yeah. Basic yeah, game design way, for economy. Those who, well, for those who don't know, like, what are we talking about regarding hangover effects and like things like this? <laughs> it's pretty much just imagine uh, like a baseline revenue of your game, and then suddenly there's a spike because offers go going in, especially those 10x or whatever x discount. So there's like a big spike, everything looking great. But then after that, there's the hangover effect, which is like a valley, like literally the other yeah. reverse spike, where suddenly your baseline revenue goes down because people have enough resources to continue playing without yeah, buying. So they anything. don't need to spend anything. And the hangover happens when this valley, the size of that valley is bigger than the spike of the revenue spike, which means you cut out from your baseline anyway. Mm. Therefore, you're in minus altogether. Yeah. 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 So if you didn't do the, the special offer, you will be in a better place. Yeah. Now, the one, one thing about that, though, that some people don't understand is sometimes that is intentional. Yeah. And the thing that a lot of people miss is not just like balancing your player economy, but balancing your player base, right? So for example, like if you have if you have tiered competition, this is basically the, the, the lessons we've learned from Game of War, right? Where you wound up having like these really high end whale like super players, but nobody to beat up on. So like the, mid, yeah. the <laughs> middle just went away. And so then they started running all these sales and promotions to, to get lower level players up to the mid tier, right? And so sometimes um, for the health of the, not, not the player economy, but the player base so that you can do matchmaking and things like that, you might want to like have these kind of sales to get players higher up in levels and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I think we called it feeding the whales. Which... <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you I can, mean, like, this yeah, is so not a... continue sharing if you want. Yeah. This is not a, a super sell problem, but there's also business reasons why you're going to want to sometimes spike revenue during certain times of year, especially when you're like considering UA budgets and that type of thing, right? Like you might be okay with a hangover effect in February or whatever, you know, like, or, yeah. or vice versa, maybe not. Um, so outside of those like core monetization and economy changes, there's been some really strong social features. So they have new 5v5 game modes. Um, this was introduced, I think, in November and December. Um, they have a, a huge range of different modes now. Jakob, if you go to um, your events uh, screen, you'll see 5v5 Brawl Ball yeah, there. Yeah, Brawl Ball, okay. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> and this just allows for a much more chaotic gameplay experience and for larger Ooh. groups of friends to it's play for together. Me. It's for yeah, me. so it's Amazing. like there's a lot going on on the map right now that's a lot harder to do some of that macro gameplay that Joe was talking about because there's just so many so much damage being applied oh all God. the time. That would it's look very, so very great chaotic. in the creatives. Oh my God, guys, if you're listening, <laughs> please put it in the creative. Seriously, like that's amazing. 5v5, that's what, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's a lot of fun. See it. It's it's by far my favorite favorite gameplay uh, mode right now. The second thing uh, you can see again on Jacob's home screen, um, if he didn't lose his last match, I'm not sure if he did or not, is uh, the new win streak mechanic. Yeah, which uh, yeah. he did lose. Uh, but I yeah. said, but it's in the it's in the in the recording. So if you, yeah. you know yeah. actually if you go, go to your back, go back, then it's 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 definitely visible there. Go to All your right. pro player profile. Click click on Testomatic. Uh, there yeah. you go. Max win oh, streak. You can see this little flame thing here. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Super, super smart piece of UI. Every single player I know that's on my friends list constantly screenshots these and share them to each other. So it's like this sort yeah. of um, peacocking. small, yeah, it's a peacocking sort of like a small win that they used to have in the game, but they brought back. And now Ooh. when you do win streaks, you get extra trophies. So you progress even faster. Ooh. Players are really, you know, figuring out really smart ways to kind of maximize that by getting brawlers that have low amounts of trophies on them and then getting it stacking a really, really high win streak and pushing on their total uh, trophy pile that way. Boy, um, Jacob, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll only play for half a day. Come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I think mine is at like a, my my max was like 106, but I was playing on low trophy brawlers just to cheese it a little bit. Uh, what? Yeah. Hey. Why is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. 
a few more community focused things. You can hop back into the um, the the paper if you want, Monte, because that's where we have screenshots of this. So the the crux of this is that they have these community events where mm. um, yeah, basically the community can do an action, and through that action, they unlock extra additional wards for the entire community base. I think it's uh, I'm not sure if it's like just com completing brawls or killing. Other brawlers or winning matches. I'm not sure, but um, this is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, the, the, the top great. screenshot there is the, yep. and then the, we'll talk about the second one here in a second. Um, but like by doing a certain amount of, uh, I think it's killing a certain amount of brawlers, you unlock specific pulls on the gacha. You do mm. double star drops, is that first green star there. Um, and then all the way at the top end, you see uh, what's called coin shower, which is a super, super attractive. Um, <laughs> offer for all of the free-to-play players because it means every time you get a win in the game you get free coins so like every mm. single free-to-play player is pushing super hard in engagement to try to unlock that for the community um and then the top star there is a legendary pull for everybody for free so like the, there's a lot of free mm. value for for free-to-play players and then the second screenshot here you can see of how they're kind of pushing on that with quests so they have these six unique quests here that are um, three of them use this play again mechanic, mm -hmm. which is ideally pushing players to just re up the next play. So they don't, they, they push on their session length a little bit. And then the other three are play six or play end matches with a team. And again, these are just trying to push on sort of that K factor type KPI where I'm, I'm having longer sections and I'm having sessions with my, my friends and in theory, you know, those types of, KPI uplifts oftentimes result in higher engagement. They result in higher monetization because you're playing with friends who are also paying, et cetera. Um, mm. So yeah, those are some really cool uh, community-focused items that are also pushing on their DAO from inside the game without having to you know, purely go on do UA. Um, yeah, so last thing, uh, this has been kind of hard to figure out because uh, it's not viewing for everybody and the only way we've mm. sort of seen this is through twitter but they are starting to trial ad tech in the game and limited countries um, so that's those those other ads you mentioned in the, the beginning yeah yeah yes. they mm. are uh certain countries now have the option to unlock a, a view view this ad to get this benefit type of thing Ooh. inside the brawl pass you can um you, I think you can get like the second uh, reward every end tiers um that is unlocked via the the, the ad view for some of those rewarded countries. Video. Okay, yeah. interesting. A reward, mm. We're doing rewarded video. Um, as well as like a second freebie in the store, I believe, is also via that ad. Now that could be, some of that could be just like people misreporting it on Twitter, but that I'm fairly certain those are the two uh, rewarded ad placements. And uh, I would anticipate them rolling that out further once, you know, this, these initial tests are, are going on. I think I saw the screen when the, the recap YouTuber was talking about the ads. Like these would be the perks that you would get these from. Okay, Aspects. yeah, that makes that makes sense. Um, that's pretty. Those are pretty significant rewards for just watching some rewarded videos. Yeah, and you know, in these types of games, which have historically been pretty IP heavy, when they introduce ads, so long as they're doing it in a way that doesn't massively cannibalize their economy, you can expect like twenty to thirty percent. Uh, total revenue uplifts from yeah, them, so yeah. that's a, that, that is a huge increase on a game that's making you know billion dollars a year or whatever. Is it legal now to like um, discriminate players where you can show ads to one group but not another? Is that is that? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's been a while since I looked at this. So. No, it's like it's completely they're, normal. Uh, they're currently doing it, so I guess it passed okay. their yeah, legal yeah. department. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, if you can't, I mean, I would def. I, I mean, cert certainly for some countries it may make sense, but I would say if you do this across your whole audience in the West, you're going to cannibalize the shit out of your game, in my opinion. But it depends. It depends on the rewards. It like really depends yeah. on which portion of your and the economy. placements as well. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. But I just, yeah. I just don't think that be, be, you know, in terms of the, the the value exchange for an ad versus like the IEP, it's just so off, right? Um. Just one tidbit, like if you just look at what Heyday is doing currently, yeah. they have segmenting the the payers and like non payers there. For instance, if you're a non payer there, only after level ten they only give you even the option to watch rewarded videos, like this kind of yeah, whole that's... theater thing. That's exactly um, how works. you should do it if if that's legal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is. They, it they is. have yeah. segmenting. Game that's currently yeah, Heyday. So so, so what what I'm saying is basically that I don't think so. They 
really will go with this kind of usual setup like we have in you know most of the industry where there's like <laughs> ips and ads live in like one ecosystem like whatever survivor io whatever like these games they will probably What's still wrong want survivor to... io so we're talking about shit Supercell. Of money. That's the thing. So we want to get Felix on the podcast at some point talking about the ads in Supercell games. So they will probably segment it anyway. So it, it's like if you're a payer, I think you either get this for free or like like I guess you get it for free anyway through Battle Pass or like having purchases. But like I don't think so. They will kind of cross into the you know paying audience. But even yeah. even if it's just it's up to you if you want to watch the rewarded video or not. It's not interstitial. Man, it's, it's inter- premium experience. Supercell premium experience. They're very orthodox about these things. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I have, um, yeah, so uh, I think the last last bit of stuff for me on the deep dive, I, without, I can't just talk about the good things. I have to also kind of like dive back into things that I'd want to improve as a PM. <laughs> and if you open up the store, there's a lot of like, unoptimized items here they're they're not really doing a huge amount of personalization for example mm. I'll, I'll make like a hundred dollar purchase and then the next day there'll be a bundle for like four dollars yeah and um <laughs> you know like we we know from uh the, everybody the, knows the, what are everybody yeah. knows <laughs> from from the hiring that's going on at supercell this is primarily done because they don't actually have a pm working on the game and literally it's the you know like the gm is making the offers in the game every mm. now and then and they don't have a huge team to kind of roll out this offer strategy. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're, they need to either have an engineer create more programmatic systems to allow them to do personalized offers for different types of things. Right now, they're only doing it on the brawlers that you own. You'll yeah, get but also, skin... but look, do they have they have the data team, right? So they can they can yeah. create segmentation and then just you know talk to the to the team and then show show the offers. I, will, I need to talk to you guys after this, <laughs> this <laughs> podcast okay. about what they got on the team and what they don't. Okay. But, yeah, but, okay. but but keep in yeah. mind keep in mind that before uh, Mate, they pretty yeah. much still follow this kind of cell kind okay, of you know, sure. paradigm, okay. yeah. like still very lean, okay. lean teams. Yeah, and like, I know for instance, just just at Trap like when we were doing Battle Legion, we have just one person that was doing the offers. It took so yeah, much I, time to just I do know. the offers properly, and it wasn't like that big of automation, whatever. It just looked through Excel sheets, but it has price segmentation. It has yeah, personalization. Yeah, yeah. We included like five, four behavioral factors of gameplay into it, and it could still like take one person's whole time, just offers, yeah. nothing else. Yeah. Okay. How many people Fair would enough. you say uh, work on Heyday just based on the two hundred and fifty million dollars they make a year? Like, oh, this is like, like super small, like uh, less than twenty. Yeah, <laughs> like five feet. five people work on yeah, that game. Of course. Yeah, it's insane. yeah, but you know, like they, fifty they million just, dollars per headcount. Yeah, Easy. they just had our friend Maya and uh, as a GM, and then uh, most probably just gonna <laughs> grow the thing quite heavily this year. So, <laughs> yeah. Wait, how how uh, big is the Brawl Stars team? Uh, that it's four by fifty. Yeah, they they are growing. Frank has mentioned they are growing to forty five people. I think yeah. right now they're at like thirty nine or forty. Okay. So, so yeah, this is clearly a, a, a departure from their old model. Like, like oh, yeah. There is no like, cell anymore. anymore. No yeah, cell, no cell anymore. <laughs> it's yeah, a very no. big cell. <laughs> very big cell, yeah. If you look at their LinkedIn, they're specifically hiring in UA admon, sorry, yeah. UA and admon and product managers, even though they're not all calling them all product managers. Just certain yeah. teams call them PM, certain teams don't. Um, and then some of them are also hiring in like UA or sorry, in artists so that they can bring yeah. in more content, you know, which makes sense for live ops team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back on the personalized offer stuff, they, they aren't targeting my wallet. So they don't know, like they're not sending me offers based on my wallet economy. They're not sending me offers based on my spending uh, history. They're only yeah. sending me offers based on the brawlers I have. And they're, what, the, what they're doing there is just showing me um, skins basically for the brawlers. I own. Mm. So there's a lot that they can still uh, right. take advantage of there. So when we talk about future growth opportunities, once they bring in these PMs and once they have that and in, in that person on the team, yeah. they can really drive growth there. Once they start, that running proper ua like this is fucking, <laughs> this is gonna be on the moon like yeah this is like seriously yeah but that, that's that's the thing that the whole thing that you pointed there Mate, that like the biggest skew is what like uh some kind of a yeah. gem offer 
which yeah. is like yeah. when I when I look at games and even when the like popular one, one talk to my that's, that's it. talk to my clients or whoever like I'm kind of working with and like first thing I like give me a pie chart of your like revenue sources on IAP and if it's like more than fifty percent is coming from these anchoring gem prices oh it means you don't have an offer system that's you know being yeah, enabled in the game yeah, yeah, yeah. which just means like people need to willingly go there and willingly click on it it shouldn't be that way yeah yeah. Yeah, but I, I would agree with you, Ken, like personalized offers, especially like using oh. machine learning uh, to like optimize bundles and things like that, or even just simple, you know, just a simple, simple step of, up, step, yeah. step down, all yeah. that kind of stuff is like so easy. So yeah, yeah. That, there's not like, as, as Ken said, there's not even the basic, you know, RFM formula here, the eShop one, like recency, frequency, monetary yeah. value. Yeah. It's not taken into account. Even that's not there, the baseline. Nope. And we're not talking about ML stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, yeah. as, as as you mentioned again, like there is actually no one on the team who are literally who can, no one who can do it. Yeah, so it's like yep. all these all these like massive economy changes that you guys are seeing in the game is because they hired a game designer from Blizzard who was an associate director of product at Blizzard who is now a game designer at Supercell, and he's like also got a really strong economy in mind, Jeffrey Shen, and he's nice. bringing in all these new these new ideas to these uh, to the economy. So that like. Just a few hires yeah. can really make this game explode. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever they're doing, I mean, we've seen the performance, right? All those guys should get like big bonuses for whatever they were doing. <laughs> you can be sure that they are treated very well at sure. Supercell, for sure. Um, I and mean, I still there's... believe like this is just the beginning, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there's there's like two more things I'd probably want to poke at here that they can improve on. Um, the event structure is pretty random. We talked, I think Joe, you mentioned that there's, there seems to be always something that like for every type of player in the mm -hmm. events, right? Like, and that, that has pros and has cons. Yep. So the big pro there is that whatever persona you are, you have a mode that you can play. But from a con perspective, like that's really bad for live ops because I'm not f pushing people mm -hmm. into a live ops path that I can then monetize. It's just like, here's a smattering of events, go play them. Um, and typically in, in like mid core and hardcore games, there is a focused event where you're pushing people into a, a funnel that you're then monetizing as they progress through that event funnel. And that doesn't exist at all in, um, in, in this game outside of the brawl pass. And that's initial purchase. And then no purchases really after that, you can, you can jump some gems to like skip levels, but I don't know a single player that's a whale or a free to play player that does that. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a, a pretty big issue. They need to figure out sort of their live ops event design um, so that they can push people into the events a little bit better. And then probably, I think the last one I probably want to cover is just the this the season quest cadence. This they've actually made changes um, on this recently. You used to get quest, I think it was like twice a week inside of season mm. quest, and now they've increased the frequency for it to be once every twenty four hours. I'd still Ooh. say that this is not enough. That's one session a day. And I think if you dump that to once every six hours, you'd get, you know, three sessions a day out of a user. Um, you know, you'd have a lot more uh, sticky players. But uh, this is a pretty controversial topic amongst the Brawl Star community because some people only want to come in once a day and farm all their wins. And a lot of players uh, wouldn't like to have to come in three times a day. Uh, just experience from previous games I've worked on, three times a day is better than one time a day. So oh, yeah. that's my, my takes. Yeah, yeah. Shorter sessions is better than one longer. Uh, typically, because you're exposing them to things like the store more often from a product yeah. perspective. Like you're <laughs> creating kind of like a habit of playing, you're or yeah, the habit, more of habits. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, put them through the loop more times. Really, now, J Good. Uh, Jakob, did, if you wanted to, to go on any of your other ones, um, like I guess <clears throat> that is like pretty pretty deep dive there. Like what I would say is that uh, I don't know when. Maybe you tell me uh, when they added the. Uh, because last time I saw Boros Stars, there was no like additional power layer through these gadgets, gadgets and, and gear. Gears, yeah. I, I don't know when that was actually added, but I think there's a good direction now with the hyperchargers, which I guess we I'm not able to share because I don't have a hypercharge <laughs> brawler. Go but there's additional close power out, layer. Close this oh out my. and go to Shelly. Cl mm. Close the barley, and then you should have Shelly, the first one. Yeah, her. Yeah. Love number 11, ah, you can one. see there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so it's, again, like, additional power layer here, which I think also wasn't really, like, the... Like, you don't see it in Supercell games that much, that they're going this usual kind of a... You finish one power progression layer, we add one on top of it, and they can scarcely add, like, even, like, I don't know... Town hall, whatever town hall is that currently in like Clash of Clans, they don't really add them like like there's no tomorrow like usual games do this like 
you know, let's just increase the maximum level and put like one more power program. Like once pretty much your kind of payers eat out the content, you always want to add one more. So like this is, I would say, one of the shifts there that like they're doubling down on scaling things to like HP damage scaling, which can go forever, but again, bloats at some point. Uh, so that's good. And that's, I think, is one of those things, as, as JK mentioned, that could be the main source driving the revenue spikes here because suddenly this is new for everyone. Like, what you do with power progression layers, it's an entry point. So everybody can, you know, start from scratch there because it's a new currency circuit. Everybody needs to farm it out. Like, usually, you know, everybody, meaning the ones that are at the end, that they just have everything leveled up the same. Yeah. So that's like a big kind of a spend depth that's suddenly unlocked but we'll see later in like one to two months if it persists or not because the other thing that i would say they will probably need to and i guess that's what that's what's happening here with the brawl pass and like the free hero unlock they will also need to speed up the progression to do the same thing as aino was talking in that talk in clash of clans that you know the more power progressions layers you have there the more kind of a, this kind of whole lifetime of a game prolongs for a player starting now instead of whatever yeah. 2018. So now we need to accelerate his progression in the in the start of the game in order to catch up with people there. So now the game feels kind of more generous, but again, it's an illusion. So that works great. Yeah. Illusion. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Uh, UA. 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 Here you go. Uh, there is yeah. no UA. Thank you very Sorry. much. I, I, yeah, I no so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can we can end here. Thanks for listening. Uh, Yaku, can you? Uh, we ate them all the time. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, to share because I mean uh, there is very little UA global analysis, which is in, in the sensor tower. Just to say what they are actually running. Google meaning YouTube, and that's that was basically it until last week. <laughs> so. That was the biggest channel for for the UA in, in I think all all channels, uh, channels all geos in terms of the US, uh, Germany, and South Korea. Obviously, like those are the three biggest uh, countries for for brawl stars. Uh, from the revenue perspective, what we discussed at the beginning, but yeah, we have only two uh, two channels here, uh, which is the the Google and and the Google. So it's the display and and YouTube, which. What I can share is actually some creatives, which are a little bit interesting, a little bit more interesting, which are here. And we have some TikTok coming uh, finally as well since like beginning of January. But we can actually start with uh, with, with this. Um, you don't expect anything crazy. It's just very traditional CGI 3D elements, gameplay oriented. No, nothing is fake. Nothing is fake. Well, yeah, nothing is nothing is fake. You know, we have all like uh, if so we have this, so this is it's UGC, right? And it's a little bit annoying. So the thing is, like with TikTok, and then they, it looks like yeah, they are starting to to pay attention to more channels since like mid January. TikTok is one of them. And honestly, I see only free uh, free creatives. I think uh, the TikTok Creative Challenge uh, would be a, an amazing addition here. And what TikTok Creative Creative Challenge means is you actually work with TikTok creators. You just put the brief out there, and TikTok creators are kind of doing all these videos for you. And it's it can be anything from five to ten to twenty per week. And since they are working with so many influencers already on YouTube, I mean, this would be great source of, of new creatives which are not super traditional right because we have this and that's that's basically it right <laughs> so it's it's kind of you know i'm a little bit sad because that's basically the whole whole ua kind of <laughs> kind of operations for this game and i really hope this is going to be way more than just a few videos here and there and a little bit more spending as we go in 2024. Why do you do, why do you think yeah. that is? Is it because they can live off of organic so well? Is it because they're just not making enough per user to buy users? Is it like why why is this the way it is? Not enough headcount. Like, I guess not enough headcount. Then like how traditionally they are kind of built, because uh, you said like small team like. They don't do that much UA. Ilka said they like all their kind of ninety uh, percent. Like ninety percent is is organics, but you like you can live with this to a certain point. But if you are scaling like this, 
you want to grow on the UA side and you want to grow quite quite a lot because it's just like it, it's a shame like not to pull like uh put gas into this machine yeah well mate i'm seeing like just looking at data.ai yeah. it seems like they ramped up well they they ramped up uh user acquisition around january 7th yes um yep and maybe to the point that like i, I know we talked about before like I think Ken, you were mentioning how are they gonna, or maybe it was you, Jakob, that we're, we were talking about. How do they combat like the the hangover effect? And it seems like you know January sixth where you had the big spike. So maybe they are pushing UA to just try to like not have the numbers come down so much. But um, yeah, for whatever reason, it does seem like they. I mean, they don't do a yeah, ton look, of UA compared to like uh, you know some of the other games they, that do massive amounts. But that's it, the thing. Yeah, it's just but, like making forty million uh, a month now. Uh, yeah. with almost like zero UA. Like, can you imagine like how much money they can make with a serious UA? Yeah. But it does <laughs> but, seem like they kind of tripled or quadrupled UA from pri prior to January seventh or something. All these like nice videos. This is old video I remember from the launch date. So this yeah. is really the old one, and it's now like they now recently launched on on Instagram and, and Facebook. And it's still very small. I mean, we might see like some some new numbers uh, as we go, but you know, all these other companies, Facebook, Google, TikTok, Unity, Apple, I mean, I also was like, with this amount of budgets that you could potentially deploy in the UA, like you should be everywhere. Just look at like look at White Out White Out Survival. Like you open up fridge, like there's like ten videos, ten videos jumping on in your face that is actually vital how, survival. How, how big do you think is their influencer budget? Oh, Jesus, like... Huge, huge. Yeah, a few, uh, few millions. Absolutely. Yeah, easily. If, 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 you, if you look at the promo videos for each patch, you can kind of just see how much money and polish they put into community management. It's, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you, you rem rem remember, like, the launch date where they kind of invited in all the, like, creators and influencers to to launch the game and i mean yes that's like one of the one of the the pillars that you have uh, from the ua point of view but like it's it's not scalable yeah, that, i mean that, that's my thing man like super sell but the, honestly like the whole industry has been bitching about this thing for like i don't know how many years and i think we're either missing some kind of key point or there's some kind of giant misconception that somewhere that why supercell is not spending shit loads of money on ua if the games are making so much money, you know, I think like, it's because they don't need to. <laughs> but like, like, see, that could be it, literally. Like, because for instance, the influencer marketing is just cheaper, and through UA, it would cost them more. That could be one of the things, literally, like Ken said. But may maybe this is the profit maximizing UA spend. I mean, do we really know if more UA is gonna? Yeah. Profit maximize? Would it be profitable? A good question. We, yeah, would it be profitable? Let's not. Yeah, let's not go into. This. <laughs> yeah, let's not go into question. that direction yeah. please it's a... <laughs> yeah. no, but I, and... I can still see like so many things like you know we mentioned like in terms of the creatives like different modes like all of these like this is super basic I mean really like this is that's by the point. default like, I think we're missing something because like who what's bearing them from literally just like buying like full fledged UA team from some other company you know overpaying them like what's stopping nothing Nothing but like what? Them. Pa yeah, pause my the understanding podcast is they right have here. some expert <laughs> UA folks. I can tell you guys why. But I can pause the. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, like yeah. Mm. So. so there's there's no additional like audience, which seems like very vague. I mean, there's there, always there's, like there's new... eight billion phones in the world. Like, come on, like, there's like <laughs> always like new, <laughs> new audience. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's always new audience, and if you if you bought all of them already, then like fucking re retarget them. Yeah, that's okay. a good but, but what's that? Okay, maybe a different podcast. But what's the what's the retargeting capabilities now? I would it's say the, it's very little. Again, for, for Supercell. Well, well, why you have the Supercell ID? So you have like lo lots of lots of different uh, kind of the, data the headcount required to do it. Like they they need to build the live ops team that can go and push all yeah. those campaigns. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, sure. But then look, I mean, all of like this is. You know, like it can be oh, okay. This is nice, actually, but it can be so, so, so much more. We to see, but yeah, I mean, that's 
that's another another discussion, I guess, uh, that we don't okay. see something. All right, there. so should should we wrap this up with Outlook, guys? Should we uh, yeah. close oh this out? I'm okay. looking forward to see how this is going to end uh, on the moon, literally. If if they keep doing this, like what they are doing with all the content, and it's not going to be like a highway, highway to hell, <laughs> then yes, okay. this is just the beginning. So may, maybe to wrap this up, let me bring back the, the three questions that I posed at the beginning of this discussion. So first, the first question was the recent spike. What did they do? And it sounds like from what I'm hearing from you, Ken, it was like more around offers, sales, and they've made some structural changes in, in, in terms of the game. Um, would you guys, is that the basic understanding? Yeah. Or what, what else was, so what did I like miss? 95, in terms of, 95% of it probably. Is okay. that the new, new sales, new structures, new economy management. Oh, wait. New key, hires, key hires. Key <laughs> hires. That's what you said as well. Okay. Yeah. Growing and then the, the team that you know allowed them to to actually put more um, emphasis on this. The second question I asked was around the live ops changes. So it sounds like what you said, Ken, is they now they do have a bigger team. They're not going like the old school, less than ten people team type of thing. Uh, they are delivering a lot more content. Um, and I don't know, is there anything else that we should know about any any specific live ops changes? It does seem like you mentioned they, they also have brought in specific experts in some areas like economy and things like that. Anything yeah. else we need to know? I just don't know how fast it's going to be, right? Like we saw the hmm. letter from Ilka, it was like last year, right? It was like a start of last year. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're in, based in Helsinki. It takes a long time to get the best minds in the world to Helsinki to work on these teams, right? Yeah. And they're, they're even starting to consider some hybrid work that they've been mm. historically very against any form of work outside of the studio. So it's, it might be difficult for them to get the teams in needed to, to scale up, but, uh, you know, depending on how much they push, we'll see. I'm just, I'm, I'm not super optimistic about how fast that's going to be. Okay. And then the last mm. big question, the general longer term outlook are, do we expect a new baseline? So I mentioned at the beginning, 2021, there was a certain baseline that they had. It dropped in 22, 23, looking now in 24 and beyond. Do we expect the game to have an elevated baseline based upon the things that we're seeing, the new kind of live ops team and the changes that they're they're making? What is your general outlook for the game? I can go with mine, yeah, mine yeah. a little bit. So they're pretty much just a few points. They're much less generous now because you cannot go infinite in Brawl Passes. You cannot just, you know, bite with gems, farm out gems and do uh, vice versa. So that's nothing there. There needs to be specific dollars spent in there or normal or plus pass, whatever. So that's there. Then there was new spend depth added on top of it because you have the hypercharge new power progression layer, which I think will last for some time now because all of those, <laughs> I don't know, 10 or how many brawlers were added and they slowly add more. But I would imagine it would be like this kind of initial blob and then a little bit more stabilization. And hopefully by adding more and more those brawlers into the hypercharge power progression layer, they can keep up a little bit higher baseline, definitely. And then the last thing, Somebody really should optimize the offers and like all the other things, and hopefully this can kind of keep up the hangover or let's yeah. say the, the the giant spike from going completely down and like just going the other way around and maybe can even return to back to the loot boxes or gachas as they are kind of I would say slowly creeping in back into the game by changing their philosophy and on top of it we talk about ads which again yeah, okay. could help the game. Yeah. In, so in there's pretty positive of... outlook, I would say. It yeah. probably won't last the, as as it is as high. I would be surprised, but it will definitely be higher as the like 2023, 2022 baseline. Yeah, I agree. Agree with everything I have said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm already seeing quite okay. this as as a very positive uh, like beginning of of the year. Uh, then, uh, on top of whatever you said, guys, then the, the more UA, maybe, you know, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still all, all for it. That, that can even, that can help. But yeah, yeah. Okay. guys, uh, Brawl Stars team, kudos, amazing yeah. job. Great job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Good as, job. You know, and again, I, I, sh I should not comment too much because I've only played it for half a day, but I, I would say I was surprised. I was like, dude, a micro focus, like I'm more of a mobile guy. I love like that strategy and stuff, but. I know in terms of the Western market, more micro focus seems to be the play in terms of top down. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think uh, it's a great game. I'll probably be playing it a little bit more and 
and uh, def definitely was surprised at uh, what a good job they did. Yeah. All right. Nice. Great. So to wrap this up, is does anyone have any last messages for our audience about Brawl Stars or anything else, or should we wrap this mofo up? Yeah, we can wrap it up. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Okay. Love Thanks you. Thank you very much. Thanks. See you around. Cheers. See you right. around. Cheers.